Okay, good. I don't know. Probably morning uh, <coughs> to, to you. Good afternoon to Diana. My name is Peter Sotner. I'm working in sales support team inside Sub10 Systems, and this first session will be related to our product, which is running in E-band and V-band. I will explain you later what does mean E-band V-band. Don't worry. It's just a specification for some specific uh, frequency part of uh, radio spectrum. Uh, what we have in V-band, uh, V-band, as I mentioned, it's a uh, part of millimeter or part of microwave spectrum. V-band, it's uh, related to 60 gigahertz, as you can see on the slide, 60. It's a really high frequency, and we have different product. We have three product which are uh, classified or named uh, V and some number, V100, V320, and V1000. As you expect, the number behind V is related to maximum uh, user support, which you can have on the link. Uh, and these systems, uh, both systems, E-band and V-band, they are working as frequency division duplex, FDD system. It means you have this capacity full duplex. You have one frequency from terminal A to terminal B and another frequency from B to A. And as I mentioned, the number is related to throughput, uh, the lower from lower one, from capacity point of view, it's V100. It's providing you full duplex fast Ethernet. It means two, uh, 100 megabits uh, bidirectional. If you are calculating in aggregate, it's 200 megabits aggregate throughput. And uh, there is a note about uh, range, which is uh, around 1,000 or 100, uh, 1,600 meters. And this is in uh, so-called no rain conditions. This uh, higher frequencies, if you are working in traditional microwave, I don't know, 17, 23, 38 gigahertz, the rain is uh, one factor or one parameter which you can put as input for link availability calculation because the rain is affecting the attenuation and it's affecting the link availability. And this is why it's not easy to say, in or it's, it's easy if you run calculation, I will show you later, we have link calculator and you can check uh, what will be availability of your link uh, really based on the location and based on the link length. But uh, to have some maximum parameter in no rain condition, we are about this one kilometer or 1.6 kilometer. What is very nice, if you look uh, for the mechanical parameters, it's a really compact unit. Uh, you see that size is just 18 by 18 centimeters and it's around six, seven centimeters deep only. And it's very, very nice feature because you can deploy it almost everywhere, even on, on post lamps or some traffic light systems, you can deploy this link and to have uh, connectivity starting with 100 megabits. But if you need more, we have system which is running 320 megabits. And we have also system which is uh, able to provide to full gigabit uh, connection. Uh, what is, what is I think, expectable, if you are looking for higher throughput, uh, the link is shorter because you are using higher modulation, you are using uh, the bigger channel and uh, this uh, link or this transmission is more sensitive for this attenuation and all are these parameters. And this is why you can see the V1000, it's just working up to 800 meters uh, in no rain condition. Regarding size of the unit, it's same. If you look from outside and you will not check label on the unit, you are not able to uh, decide whether it's V100, V320, or V1000. Everything is the same. The shell, antennas, it's same. Just radio card, which is inside, it's different. Or modem, modem card, it's different. How, uh, how is our solution? Uh, what is concept of our solution? It's traditional microwave point-to-point -point link. Uh, if you need uh, some motto or how to how to introduce the system, we are using that we are able to deliver fiber speed over wireless link. It's really true because if you look for the most typical speed used on optical fibers, it's one gigabit. Uh, and uh, this is exactly what we are able to achieve with our V1000 system, that we are able to be as a gigabit connection, which is typical for fiber systems. And it's uh, really easy for installation and easy for configuration. I mentioned it's point to point. You are connecting two locations. You don't need any large uh, or huge functionality for networking. It's simply layer two bridge. You just need to configure your IP addresses for management of units. Uh, you need to, you can specify some VLAN if you are using VLANs and you can also work with QoS. 
and uh, mechanically or uh, from pieces or physical point of view the link is very simply you have two terminals and you have two power injectors uh, we are using standard poe and this one uh, for uh, system v320 and v1000 currently uh, it's uh, poe plus but we are introducing a new generation like second generation or next generation of our product and for this system because we put more functionality more power resources uh, to these systems uh, we need a specification which is classified as poe plus plus it's a little bit higher than poe plus uh, regarding the consumption and it's all you have two power injector you have ethernet cable and then you have to align the antennas and you have this fiber over wireless link we have this up to one gigabit capacity with very compact units uh, and using all all what you know from normal data networks ethernet poe nothing nothing special and why uh, are so important millimeter wave it's a um, couple of slides which are coming and uh, first is that today's spectrum if you are looking for some high capacity links especially in cities in some large cities uh, where you have more or a lot of link links installed it's not so easy to deploy new link with higher capacity currently if you look to the spectrum starting from uh, 4 gigahertz going to 38 gigahertz uh, for example in europe you see that uh, we have less than half of gig available for transmission and uh, if you are looking for city like i don't know london paris and this very, very large cities uh, you are not able to obtain some large channel if you are looking for for example 300 megabit uh, link it's usually not so easy to obtain the license because for this 300 megabit throughput you have to have 56 megahertz channel and in some frequency band it's almost impossible in cities to to have such big channel and if you need uh, one gigabit link full duplex which is our v1000 system and uh, your traditional microwave for example 24 gigahertz system it's uh, you have to and you are using 256 quam modulation if you look you need totally 156 megahertz for each direction in this case you have to have like 300 megahertz just for this one link and if you look to the millimeter wave which uh, and millimeter waves are the 60 70 80 gigahertz today what is allocated for user point-to-point -point solution it's 19 gigahertz if you compare what we have in traditional microwave and what we have in millimeter wave it's uh, obvious that uh, this millimeter wave band it's much more ready uh, for uh, for high throughput uh, or high capacity links and for high dense network because we have plenty of plenty of uh, frequency capacity and what are now millimeter wave uh, from definition point of view it's a millimeter wave are traditional radio waves it's electromagnetic radiation and what is characteristic that in millimeter wave uh, we are speaking about frequency starting from 30 gigahertz going to 300 gigahertz and the reason why millimeter wave is if you calculate what is wavelengths for these frequencies you see that 30 gigahertz it's 10 millimeters and 300 gigahertz it's one millimeter and this is why this frequency band it's called millimeter wave and this is why we are calling sub 10 systems because we are doing uh, this sub 10 millimeters it means something what is in this millimeter waves regarding uh, rest of the band everything what is below 330 uh, gigahertz it's traditional radio radio bands you know there are licensed microwave system or unlicensed wi-fi system working in 2.4 5.4 or 5.8 gigahertz and uh, what is uh, higher than 300 gigahertz it's infrared or light uh, uh, transmission uh, you can see also different uh, classification the i think most popular now it's uh, mmw millimeter wave band but you can also see uh, efh which is extremely high frequency if you look for some graph with uh, available spectrum you see now i think uh, it's it's a very nice uh, screen for remembering what is really millimeter wave and you see uh, we have uh, traditional microwave we have unlicensed band which is 245x and uh, in millimeter wave now i will explain you this uh, letters in product classification we have this yellow area which is around 60 gigahertz and this area it's called v band via victory 
and then there are three green bands which are already allocated in uh, some uh, regulatories uh, it's uh, event as eco or Ecuador and it's uh, 70 80 and there is also some capacity in 90 gigahertz today's systems are mainly using 70 80 and the reason is that these high frequency systems are really expensive and uh, you have to uh, you know it's like uh, with uh, any new system if there is production on some level the price is decreasing dramatically and this is what is just happening in this millimeter wave systems that uh, technology for production it's uh, more and more how to say efficient and we have more and more requests for such technology and it's logical that price will go down it's like if you compare optical interface 10 years ago what was priced for uh, for example gigabit uh, G, uh, sfp module and if you compare uh, price today uh, it's a couple of times lower lower uh, pricing and this is what uh, what we are uh, what is our main focus that we are doing product in v-band which is around the 60 gigahertz and these products are classified with v and some digit related to speed and we have also a product which is called e at this moment we have just uh, we have one system which is e1000 it's running in this 70 80 gigahertz and as you expect it's full gigabit uh, link what is characteristic uh, for a millimeter wave especially for this v-band it's uh, this uh, two or three or two two parameters plus one function or features uh, it's general that for v-band and also for e-band we have very narrow antenna for our V-band, which is the 60 gigahertz system, you see that the antenna beam is around 1.4 degrees. Uh, for V-band, there is one advantage, or it can be also a disadvantage, but it's advantage especially for this high dense deployment. There is a very high speed oxygen absorption. It means that atmosphere, just without any rain, without any dirt is uh, inside the air, uh, you have attenuation 14 dB per kilometer. It's just atmosphere. It's called oxygen peak. Later on, there will be a graph where you can see detailly what is happening. But on V-band, remember oxygen or atmosphere, it's doing very high attenuation. As I mentioned, this 14, 15 dB per kilometer. But these two features, very narrow antenna beam and this oxygen absorption, it's very good for frequency reuse or high dense deployment. Because you have, you can have the capacity in 60 gigahertz. It's a really large one, uh, and you can also, because of this attenuation and uh, antenna beam, you can uh, reuse use channel, and finally you can make a really dense network. And example, what does it mean dense network? You can see on this picture what is uh, what is on the right side. It's a back part of our building. For example, Diana is sitting somewhere in this building. And we have, uh, for some long testing, four parallel links. You see there is frame. Uh, and you see on each frame, we have four units, which are connecting to the opposite side. And we are running four times 320 megabits link. It's uh, like 20, 25 meters. And links are very close together. You see it's like 10 centimeters maximum between antennas. And this is what you can really achieve. This is live, real communication. It's not just unit on the, on the frames or on the mast it's really if you are interesting or if, if you will be able to visit Edge House you can see uh, that these links are really connected and there are transmission and these links are working without affecting each other I see that uh, there is one question but it's probably oh there is a uh... Uh, okay, my name is Peter Sotner. You will have it in the presentation. This is question probably older than, than I expect, but uh, okay, you can use Peter or you, you have contact to Diana and she's able to provide you my contact details if you need later on. Okay, this is uh, again, this is uh, really for high density example. You see four links, 10, 15 centimeters maximum between the units and these four links are running again currently. Detail specification or some tech specification uh, for v100 which i mentioned it's our new platform it's uh, coming it was introduced uh, i think in spring this year something like april march i don't uh, th th this time frame we introduced new platform 
which is named V100. Uh, it's uh, capacity 100, and uh, you see uh, the characteristic. It's using 60 gigahertz. We have channel size um, 100 megahertz. Uh, antenna gain, it's 38 dBi. It's uh, parameter, this antenna, same antenna, it's using for all systems. Uh, maximum transmit and antenna port, it's 8 dB. In this case, you have, uh, okay, there is some attenuation on, on, on connection, but, and you see that around 46 or 45.5 dB, it's total energy or maximum energy which you, which you are able to radiate uh, out of the system. A receiving sensitivity, it's around minus 70 dBm. Uh, and if you calculate, you have, oh, oh, you have like, oh, you have plenty of uh, dB uh, for link margin. It's not so critical because we have link calculator. Uh, you don't need to remember these values because they are programmed in calculator and you can simply specify your location, link length, and system will calculate availability. Regarding power, I mentioned it's uh, PoE++. Uh, you can see that uh, consumption is around 28 watts. It's 28, uh, and we are still working to to decrease it. But uh, you know, if if you are looking for some functionality and you you need to have powerful computer inside or processor inside, you have to um, use some energy to to be able to provide all functionalities. Regarding temperature age, uh, it's standard from minus 45 to plus 55. And what we have, uh, we have uh, some optional accessories I will present to you later. It's an uh, optical alignment scope to be able to make link alignment. It's very useful if you are, I think, for two scenarios. First, if you are totally unknown in this system, in this millimeter wave systems, it's very useful to have at least one such tool to be able to align antennas to be sure that you are properly is that your antennas are properly oriented. And second scenario, if you are deploying a lot of links, it's very useful because you are minimizing uh, the installation and uh, commissioning time for the link. Regarding interface, uh, it's, uh, there is, uh, probably it's lost somewhere, but it's uh, also supporting, yeah, it's 10 and, and uh, yeah, because you have fast ethernet overlink, you have ethernet or fast ethernet connection. We are supporting QoS. Uh, it's um, uh, eight Q, eight Qs available, and you can use uh, VLANs and also diff service or type of service for prioritization. Very low latency. Uh, we have uh, we have latency less than two hundred microseconds uh, per one way, and as option you can also have system with uh, IS encryption. Regarding management, SNMP, V1, V2, and V3. Uh, system is configured through the web interface. And cable, because it's using this uh, specification, which is valid for gigabit Ethernet, because our v V320 and V1000, V1, you have to have higher connection than fast Ethernet. Uh, the maximum cable between your data equipment, your switch, your router, and unit, it's maximum 100 meters. And our suggestion is uh, to use CAT5E uh, and definitely outdoor and to have shielded this cable. And the reason is outdoor is logical because you are definitely going somewhere in outdoor environment and you have to have proper cable for it. And shielding, it's also important to minimize noise uh, which is coming, which can be indicated on the cable. And also it's making, how to say, connection for ground between mast and your local area because if you know if there are some tall buildings, the difference uh, on the ground point, uh, if you are, I don't know, on floor 15 and you are at the ground level, it's uh, very big and it can also damage your unit because you are, you know, there is, if there is some pot different potential on ground, uh, it's uh, electricity and it can potentially damage your equipment. Uh, we are using RJ45 connector, which are standard uh, in the Ethernet environment. And uh, as I mentioned before, size it's very, Small one, you see 18 centimeters by 18 centimeters, and deep it's just less than seven centimeters. If you if you are looking just for outdoor unit, the weight it's 2.5 kilo. If you add bracket, which are needed for installation on the wall on the mast, you have additional one kilo in bracket. You have totally 3.5 kilo for link installation. Regarding 
how to say resistance or mechanical resistance system is supporting uh, or it's classified as IP66 or IP67 based on the version. And what is also useful, we are supporting synchronization over a wireless link, we are supporting uh, SYNC E protocol and we are also specific, uh, supporting 1588 standard uh, for synchronization over the Ethernet. VC20, uh, it's very similar difference. Uh, this system supports two modulation, BPSK and QPSK. You have different throughput, 320 on 160, which is logical. If you have uh, lower modulation, the throughput is lower. Uh, antenna is same, a little bit better gain uh, for BPSK modulation because you have uh, 10 dB compared to 8 dB before. And uh, also powering it's less because it's enough to use PoE plus uh, power injector. And also latency is a little bit uh, lower, it's uh, less than 50 microseconds. But uh, this system has limited features. There is no, no way how to have, for example, synchronization, the Sync 1588. It's uh, well, what we have today, it's available, but there is no plan to develop some new feature on V320 because we are fully concentrated on V100 and later on, on new V1000 platform. And V1000, uh, again, Similar specification. This is uh, this V1000. It's uh, today available. It's already available product, and it's using PoE plus. And you see, it's able to go up to 800 meters with no rain condition. But later on, uh, we will introduce new generation V1000, and there will be all this feature what you what you saw on uh, V100. There will be Synky, more QoS, and so on. Regarding physical, uh, it's uh, or ordering, it's uh, very easy. We have just one part number for the link, and uh, if you order this part number, you will receive everything. You have on the picture. If you order, for example, VC20 link or V1000 or V100, inside the box, paper box, you will have this, all these uh, pieces what you see on the picture. Uh, there will be two terminals. One is terminal A and one is terminal B. Uh, there are two brackets for alignment, which are connecting the terminal with mast or wall. Most, most uh, mounting uh, are possible. It means you can install it on the mast or on some wall, and you can also install it on the wall. Then you have uh, two ice shield. Uh, the ice shield has this uh, metal cover which are putting on top of the unit to protect the unit uh, from snowing and raining. You have uh, these two Ethernet seals, uh, which are, because our terminal, which is here, it's coming with uh, approximately one meter long cable. And this cable, it's uh, waterproof. It's tested when cable is going to the unit, this uh, gland or grommet, it's tested uh, to be sure that it's water waterproof. And now you need to know, you have to connect your cabling, and this is why we have this Ethernet sealing kit, because we will put this connector on one side of the Ethernet seal, and there is, you know, this gum ring, which is making waterproof protection around the cable. And then you will connect uh, your cable, which is uh, going to some uh, server room or some location when you, when you have uh, data equipment. Then you will have two power injector inside. Uh, this is uh, this is a physical shape of our power injector. It's a cube or, or a piece which you have on one side. You have a plug for electricity, and then you have two ports, uh, two RJ45 ports. One you see its name LAN in. Its connection which is going to your network, typically to some switch or some router. And second, it's called power and LAN out, and this is cable which is going to the terminal over this. Ethernet seal kit. And uh, regarding this leads uh, for electricity, we are supporting uh, during the ordering, you can specify what type of cable you need. If you are uh, using the Euro plug, you will receive Euro. If you are using uh, this US type, you can you will receive US or uh, UK, as you can see on the picture. And last items in the package is this mast bracket. And this is very easy for installation on some mast. You see that there is back part, there are four holes. These four holes are connected to this uh, alignment bracket with screws, which are coming 
uh, with this uh, mass bracket that we have set of screws and nuts uh, needed for connection. And then we have this metal ring which are using uh, through this and through this part and you are fixing ink uh, on the mast. There are different sizes to be able to put it on mast from 40 millimeters to 110 millimeters. And optional accessories. Uh, this is what uh, you have to order separately. It's not coming as default with the unit. We have this optical alignment scope. You see how it's working. There is terminal. You have this uh, scope bracket, which is fixed on the unit. And then you have this scope. If you look to the scope, there is cross. And uh, you have to move the unit uh, to target with this cross uh, on the opposite side. Later on, there will be some pictures. You see what is uh, visible uh, in the scope. If you need, we are able to also deliver Ethernet cable, but uh, I think the most of our installation are that customers are ordering it locally. And last accessories, it's lightning protector. It's very useful if you have um, some location when it's high probability for lightning. This lightning protector can uh, protect more uh, your equipment. To later on, there, there are some pictures or this uh, recommendation regarding lightning are also included in the package. There are two or three papers which are coming as quick installation guide. And this lightning protector in some countries has to be also installed if you are going with cable to the building. Yeah, just to protect uh, everything what is inside the building. Uh, there are the main diameters. It's uh, not so small unit, but it's really professional and really reliable. Uh, it's in aluminium body and uh, all, all components inside are really fully outdoor uh, specification. In, the, in this case that you are installing the lightning protection, in this case you don't need to install Ethernet seal kit because you, can, you have here two inputs. One will be used for cable which is going to your server room and second cable will be cable which is going directly from the terminal. You don't need to install like your terminal, Ethernet seal kit and then lightning protection. You can directly install terminal connect to the lightning protection unit. Okay, uh, what, why narrow antenna beam is so interesting? You have here picture what are typical antenna if you are speaking about 2.4 gigahertz or 24 gigahertz and then 60 gigahertz. Remember, I mentioned very narrow beam, and you have everything on upper picture, everything in one. This light blue, it's uh, represent uh, represent uh, 60 gigahertz antenna. You see, it's just 1.4 degrees. If you are doing same connection with 24 gigahertz, you see it's around 12 degrees. And if you put 2.4, very old Wi-Fi type of system, you see the typical antenna beam can be up to 120 uh, degrees. And if you look how far it's uh, the signal danger, you see that on 32 kilometers, you can still see a lot of signal. If you are using full power and some high gain antenna, you can still detect uh, some foreign 2.4 gigahertz signal. Same for 24 gigahertz signal. If you have 60, it's very close going to zero or almost no signal and reason is remember the attenuation of the atmosphere if system is traveling three kilometers just atmosphere is taking more than uh, 45 or around 45 db which is really large volume of energy and uh, this uh, oh, this uh, in this scenario you can remember this uh, high frequency reuse or high dense network and this is exactly what you can what you can uh, do with our V-band system. That you can have one link, which is presenting with this green signal, and uh, then uh, you have another link. They are in one line. They are they can even use uh, same channel or same frequencies. And you see what what is happening. If I am uh, on such link. And I am doing everything properly. It means the power level is uh, what, what, what you calculated and so on. Uh, the signal from the bottom unit, it's not reach the upper unit because there is uh, some R or some uh, there is a significant part of the transmission which is attenuated by oxy oxygen. And this is what is this green that signal. It's uh, for example readable here, 
it still has noise or interferences but uh, you see in less than half of the next link the signal it's so sl small that this side which is on the top it's even not detecting that there is some foreign system and same in opposite direction if you will try to do in traditional microwave system it will definitely not be successful because this beam it's much bigger it will be like this one and this one and energy will be still so high that this system will receive signal from middle terminal and also from bottom terminal and it will definitely affect the link quality okay if you are now looking for link oh pardon what is what is really critical uh, snow fog dust you don't need to take care about it because it's not so critical what is issue for our v and e band link is rain and what uh, what what is uh, needed for rain you have to simply calculate okay this is my link and uh, in microwave link it's normal that you are calculating availability or customer is saying okay please design link to have four nines availability and you have to check if you are reaching this availability and this is uh, what is the most critical that you have to select what is the rain level in your country or in your area and then check whether this rain it's uh, uh, link is capable to compensate this rain or not this is uh, like uh, other conditions what is also important is that you have to check the line of sight this v-band system and e-band system uh, is working just in line of sight system you have to check that there are no obstacles and even some reflection area very close to the Fresnel zone and this is what is uh, this water tower if it's close to your link, it can happen that uh, over this uh, roof, if you know this roof is typically from the metal, there can be some reflection which is affecting your link. And also this crane or construction machines. Uh, we have a couple of installation when people are suddenly complaining, oh, link is not working. Uh, we have a high level of uh, or high volume of errors and so on. And the reason can be that uh, there are some constructions activities and if this machine is moving some you know some brakes or some concrete this uh, lines which are from the metal can affect the link it's it's very very you have to be very careful if you see that okay this link is going over some construction area if people are simply thinking that okay this is just small piece of metal it is not affecting the link it's not true it's definitely affecting the link and you have to be careful uh, to to select right uh, place for installation to minimize reflection always to be as close to edge of the roof as possible if you need to be somewhere in the middle not at the edge of the roof uh, make a mast enough in, in manual there are some recommendation how far and how high has to be mast if, if you are not at the edge to avoid this bad reflection uh, from the roof and now about the this link calculator or link estimator you can download it from our web page uh, there is, uh, it's good time to time to check this web page because we are putting some updated versions. If there are some improvement, uh, and you can simply download it's uh, it's Excel file. You have to enable macro, and it's very easy for calculation. You see this blue uh, items or blue fields. And these are uh, fields which you can edit, and then you have calculation of your link availability. And uh, as on next sheet, you will you will see more detailed calculation. I will now skip uh, directly to this to this tool. It's looking like on the picture. You see, it's improved a little bit because we have now V100 as well included. And what you can specify, you can specify the uh, some coordinates. I will put simply some which are not so far from you. And now you see, based on this coordinates, which is uh, 24 degrees north and uh, 102 degrees uh, west, you see that rain level is 45 millimeters and rain level which is providing uh, four nines availability. It means only 0.01% time of the year which is approximately 53 minutes rain can be bigger or stronger than 45 millimeters if you know for some reason that in your area the rain is stronger or it's not so strong 
you can select if you go to these items you can select i will not use itu uh, which is coming from some statistical data but you can select manual entry and then you can specify okay i would put for example 55 millimeters and in this case system is calculating not 45 but 55 and of course this is a really big link but i will specify for example 400 meters and you see in this case everything is okay if i specify 500 it's still but if i specify 600 you see that v1000 uh, will be about uh, three nines availability it is 141 minute it's like two and a half hours unavailable per year if I now return back to ITU, you see system is simply changing this calculation. This is calculation uh, just to see the availability. If you look here, there are additional sheets. First one, it's for link alignment. We have this uh, expected RX power, which is useful to know if you are going to make alignment to be sure that they are proper, that link is properly aligned. You have to calculate it. Okay, this is my link link. And I, if there is no rain, and this is highly recommended to align the link, if there is no rain condition, you have to achieve this uh, expected RX level. If you are not achieving this RX level, there has to be some issue uh, that you are, for example, one unit, it's a little bit out of direction. And it can affect mainly link when there is some rain, because you, you are not achieving or using the highest power budget which you can. And in this case, your link will not be stable during some heavy rain. And this is really important to check. Okay, I have to receive, for example, for V320, I have to receive something like minus 50 dB. If I am finishing alignment and my receiving level is, for example, minus 60, it's definitely something wrong because 10 dB, it's too big difference. Difference can be maximum 3, 5 dB based, based on the system. If you have more than 5 dB difference between calculated and uh, measured value, definitely check alignment again and these systems also provide because uh, to see exact level in this rx power you have to look to the computer to have open some web interface for easy installation there is also so-called dc output or dc voltage output on the unit and you can connect a voltmeter to this port and system is presenting what is the receiving level uh, as dc voltage and you have graph here, for example, if I am, uh, if uh, VC20 is aligned properly, you see that on 600 meters, I have to achieve, if I have higher power, something like 2.2 volt. And if I am receiving something else, typically lower, I have to again work on realignment. And there is also a graph for E-band, e E1000. There is a little bit better because you have like direct relation. You see, if I am receiving, if I measure 2.5 volt DC, uh, I am receiving minus 50. Uh, if I am receiving uh, 3.5, you see that receiving level is something like minus 38. This is useful to know for the alignment. What, what has to be your target RX level? And if a customer is asking for some calculation, you have additional sheet and you can click and select uh, based on the technology what you are proposing for example new v100 you have such calculation you have okay frequency which was uh, which we used for the calculation what are coordinates uh, what is link length uh, and then you have calculation remember the 38 dbi gain antenna 8 db it's maximum plus 8 it's maximum tx output and then you have all this calculation you have also specification for the rain level and then you have calculation okay i have to if everything is okay i have to receive something like minus 52 db which will providing like 100 uh, percent availability but it's not true uh, in this case you can say that okay my link is the best one and there is still some probability that link will be dropped for a couple of minutes but it will be definitely something like around four nines or five nines when you have a couple of minutes uh, outage per year on and you can simply copy it if you select this uh, you can simply copy it uh, and make i don't know pdf or put it to your document as part of your offer okay any question to link calculator
I don't see any question. As I mentioned, it's on our web page. If you go to the sub 10, uh, there is product, the downloads. And if you go to the button, you see here link uh, availability calculator. It's downloading Excel file. If you are opening, you have to accept the macro because there are some complicated calculations. And when you have it opening, you can simply do it what I did. Okay, I will return back to the presentation. There is description about this rain zones. Uh, it's coming from ITU, which is Organization for Telecommunication Standard. Uh, countries are classified based on this letter. And for each letter, you have uh, you have some attenuation. Remember this uh, characteristic of V-band. It's oxygen peak or oxygen absorption. And you see this is this green line. You see that in V-band, when I have this uh, 60 gigahertz transmission, the oxygen peak it's here and it's around 14 dB. If you look for, for example, for E-band system, which is this 70, 80 gigahertz, you see that this uh, oxygen absorption it's 0 0.35 dB. If you look, it's a really big difference. Yeah, it's a couple of times higher attenuation for V band than E band. And this is again advantage and disadvantage. Disadvantage is that you cannot make so link, uh, so long link compared to E band. But you can. Uh, uh, the advantage is that you can reuse the frequency and you can put a lot of units close together. You can simply make uh, this uh, dense, high dense uh, deployment or high high dense. Uh, network with higher density of the link. Link distance. Uh, this is This is just again theory, but it's included in this link calculator. You can calculate frequency space loss, oxygen absorption, which is simply uh, you know that one kilometer is this 14.5, and you can simply take what what is your link length, and then this uh, loss caused by weather. It's special rain, and again there is formula how to calculate. There are some statistical data which, which will provide you information what is the uh, rain on this level. Oh, oh, one moment, please. That's so fair. Ah, Frank, I'm doing the webinar again. <laughs> I will call you later. Yeah? <laughs> Sorry. Bye bye. And, and uh, you will calculate, or system will calculate this attenuation by, based on the rain parameters. And again, what is typical calculation that you are looking? What is four nines uh, parameters, or 0 0.01? Uh, and uh, you will receive some number like 45 millimeters per hour. And it means that in your region, there is only 53 minutes per year probability that rain will be higher or stronger than this 45 millimeters per hour. Rest of the year will be 45 or less. And uh, if you calculate link with this parameter, you will be sure that for rain up to 45 millimeter, it's working. And if rain is stronger, it will not work because uh, attenuation will be bigger than the link budget. But keep in mind, these are just calculated or some statistical data. It can happen that in one year, it can be 20 minutes, but next year can be, I don't know, two hours. It depends on what, what is the rain situation. And again, it's coming from statistical data, but it's standard, which is used for all microwave systems. And yeah? there is no, no other technology how to calculate. What you can do that you can simply increase the rain level to be sure that you are stronger than ITU recommendation. In this case, you will be if customer is asking, okay, can you, can you, are you really sure that it will work? You can say, okay, ITU is saying 45 millimeters. I put 55 or 60 millimeters, and your link still has enough budget for it. In this case, again, it's low probability that there will be outage stronger than this 53 minutes per year, or longer than 53 minutes per year. About antenna, some technical, uh, how to say, background information. Uh, why our units are so compact? It's because we are using this uh, array, array antenna. And then this is physical shape of the antenna. You see it's uh, array panel. And this array panel is producing uh, such a radiation pattern. And what is what is the important that the difference between this first main lobe and side lobes, it's based on the system, but it's uh, for V-band, it's around 15 dB. 
and for E band it's around 13 dB. And this is why I mentioned if you calculate expected level and you are not achieving the level, you have difference like more than 10 dB or more than 5 dB, there is very high probability that your antennas are not using this main lobes between, but one one is probably oriented a little bit between main and uh, side lobe. And this is why it's so critical. Calculate expected level. And during the alignment, achieve this calculated level. And otherwise, you have almost 100% probability. It's almost sure that your link is not properly aligned, and it will immediately uh, affect your link availability if there will be heavy rain. Because if you are looking and you are losing 10 dB because of alignment, and uh, you are ready to compensate rain up to 30 dB, immediately you are now not able to compensate 30 dB of rain just 20 dB because you are 10 dB out of the calculated value. Okay, uh, very often people are asking uh, about how it's possible. It's uh, possible because we are using two frequencies. It's uh, terminal A, terminal B, this four parallel links, terminal A, terminal B, and we have two polarization, vertical and horizontal. And this is why it's possible. If you look for this link, this one is A vertical, second one is A horizontal, the third one is B vertical and last one is B horizontal. And this is why you can put the link close together because we have like, it's looking like four different, uh, different uh, transmitters. And uh, this is uh, in case that we have just one channel for A and one channel for B. With new platform, we will have a configurable channel. And in this case, you can, you can make uh, these four links more times because if we will be able to have, for example, three times A and three times B, you have again a much bigger number of uh, variants which you can use for transmission. Regarding the air interface, I mentioned it's very easy for configuration because it's point to point, you have just base parameters. Uh, this is interface of VC20, you see VC20, and uh, you see how it looks like. You have this upper part, which is like statistic, online statistic or online status. You see link quality, which is presented uh, as number one to see. Then you have uh, uh, additional link about the transmission signal and you have uh, you have uh, some graph about receiving level. What you can configure, you see on this page, this is first generation and there is no ATPC. There is just fixed, uh, fixed modulation and also fixed power. And if you need to change it for some reason, you have this option. You see that local terminal is configured for maximum power. If you decrease the power, you, you have to go to this menu and select another power level. And you have different configuration. System VC20 finally can be running in four different modes. One is 320 with heavy forward error correction, with slight forward error correction, and then we have 160 heavy pack and light pack. And this is what you configure here. You have this option. If you open it, you have four options. And system is then presenting what is what is real error rate which you can use. And operation and normal mode, it's a very low difference. If you have alignment mode, system is presenting here in graph what is voltage level. But you can measure this voltage also on this uh, DC port, which is on the unit. If you connect the voltmeter, now you will see on this DC port 2.64 volts. And here you see uh, what is difference about this for modes, you see it's 320 light forward error correction. It's using QPSK and it's achieving 320 megabit. But uh, you have to have higher signal to noise ratio, uh, at least 12 dB. Uh, and the lowest one, it's 160 forward error correction uh, with heavy for sorry with heavy forward error connection. And uh, it's able to work when uh, signal to noise ratio is around 9 dB. But throughput it's much lower. It's not 320, it's 144 megabits only. Okay. Uh, it's all about uh, V band. Uh, any question at this time for V band? Uh, regarding the user documentation, data sheets, everything is on the support page, which I present you. If I go back to this web, web page, you see uh, there are. Data sheets, manuals, some case studies. If you need upgrade firmware, you can go here. We are not, uh, uh, how to say, 
making some special protection on, on firmware. If you need to upgrade your unit, you can simply go and uh, download the firmware. And then there are additional information like uh, DOC, declaration of conformity. Uh, you can, uh, for some product, you can download MIP here. And you have also this uh, link availability calculator. Okay, I see one question. Oh, it's no question so far. <laughs> okay. Okay, we finished V band. Remember, V band it's 60 gigahertz, and application it's typically city application, short link because of this oxygen absorption. But you can deploy a lot of link in one physical location. It's this high frequency or high dense network, high frequency reuse. It's up to how to how to name it. Just remember. Uh, short link, uh, but you can put a lot of link in one physical location. The second second product or second group of product which we have uh, in our system or in our portfolio, it's E100, uh, E1000. As you see, E means it's working in E band, which is the 70, 80 gigahertz. But we are also, if you need, also able to deliver Trinity microwave, which are traditional Trinity microwave system. They are running in this, you know, in frequency from 4 gigahertz to 38 gigahertz. Uh, our Liberator E1000, you see here on the picture, it's uh, looking more like traditional microwave system. You have this outdoor unit, which is called ODU, and then you have antennas. Uh, antenna is not integrated in our V-band. Antenna is integrated inside. You are not able to attach antenna and put another one. In Liberator E1000, you can, and we have two types of antenna, 35 centimeters and 65 centimeters, or one foot and two feet, uh, two feet uh, uh, based on uh, the metric or uh, UK system. And uh, uh, this is, again, full outdoor solution. Uh, you have this outdoor unit with antenna, and then you have Ethernet cable or optical cable. In this case, you see it's orange optical cable, but you see also two Ethernet cables. And then you are going indoor, and indoor you have a box, which we call protected terminal box. And this is like splitter. Uh, it's uh, this box, it's used that you are putting power and data onto one cable and sending up. With uh, our V-Band product, remember the POE, it's coming with the product. In Liberator E1000, protected box, it's coming in product. But you have to have also 40 volt 8 DC power supply. We have some option in our uh, price sheet, but uh, you can use any 40 volt 8 DC. If you have already uh, some 40 volt 8 DC power uh, source on your location, you can simply connect this one. What you have to calculate that uh, there is a power consumption, it's around 40 watts per one link, per one unit. Uh, okay, uh, the other characteristic with no rain condition, you can go up to five kilometers. We have some links in some specific area like Bahrain and this type of area working for more than six, six kilometers and throughput which you can achieve on user data it's 1.15 gigabits or 1150 megabits and the reason why it's uh, bigger than gigabit we have here three user ports and you can mix this capacity I will explain later a little bit but you have a little bit higher capacity than gigabit and application you can just use it for one full gigabit link and we are sure that this will this will provide you enough capacity. But you can also split traffic to two independent pipes, which can be useful if you are using this link for uh, two totally different customers that you can create for each customer independent pipe, and each pipe will have uh, uh, different capacity and uh, will have different settings for QoS and this type of, how to say, customer-specific parameters. Uh, this is another picture. From the opposite side, again, you have this ODU, you have some cable, which is Ethernet cable typically, then you have a radiator and antenna. Typical or key, key characteristic, remember, it's full outdoor solution. You have just Ethernet cable going in and you have here just power injector, no, no EDU or some configurable modem, which is indoor, it's just passive splitter, which is adding power and data together. Uh, ODU and protected box, it's coming with the, with the link. Total throughput is 1.15 gigabits for user data. And again, it's a frequency division duplex. One frequency it's running in 70, one terminal it's transmitting on 70, and second on 80 gigahertz. 
latency on one unit it's around 8 microseconds if you need to calculate a complete link latency you have to calculate 8 microseconds from one, for one terminal uh, 8 microseconds for second terminal and then you have to calculate also link length why if you look for signal propagation over the air if you have two kilometers of the link this two kilometers link each kilometer it's adding approximately 3.5 microseconds and this is why we just put that it's for one one unit because uh, if you have for example three four kilometers link the attenuation or uh, sorry latency or delay uh, it's uh, not so related how long it's uh, how long are data on the units but uh, the transmission it's uh, adding you more in this case it's almost two times more than unit because Four kilometers, it will be roughly 15 microseconds, and then you have just eight microseconds on the on the link. We have different models. What we have on each model, you have two metallic gigabit Ethernet ports. But if you need optics, you can also ask option of order system with two gigabit two gigabit metallic and one optic port. But keep in mind, this optic ports it's installed in the factory, and you cannot install in the field. There is no way how to upgrade metallic unit only to metallic plus optic you have to specify during the ordering that you need optics and what is new we are now also supporting uh, this um, because it's physically sfp inside and uh, then you have short pictile cable which is going from the odu and you have this uh, lc connector on odus and you are not able to change sfp inside it's it's uh, installed in the factory it has to be tested and, and uh, then put to the waterproof case uh, what is new now that we are also supporting single fiber it's called vdm that you have sfp module which is inside and you are connecting to this sfp just through one one fiber you don't need to have two fibers one for transmit one for receive but everything is on the one fiber there is uh, one one direction it's uh, radiating on 13 tens and second direction it's on 15 50 uh, nanometers we are supporting on this system and on uh, VBand as well uh, jumbo packets. If customer needs, uh, you can go up to this 10,024 bytes frames. Uh, configuration, you can run it as one plus zero or you can run it as one plus one, but this is not traditional microwave one plus one when you have two ODUs connected to an antenna. Uh, it's like backup. Uh, the second one, it's more for backup that you can have this uh, link, which is providing you full gigabit. But then you have to have a more reliable solution. And in this case, you can, for example, deploy some, I don't know, 24 gigahertz link. Because this link will work probably on with higher availability, but will be able to provide just fast Ethernet connection, not gigabit Ethernet connection. And this one plus one is working that, OK, the primary data are going to the E1000. And if radio is down, the ODU, because we have more user port, uh, it's uh, transferring user data from uh, user port 3 to user port 2 and you can connect another technology on user port 2 and this uh, this uh, switching between this port it's uh, around 20 milliseconds it's uh, what is normally used for example on SDH on SDH system you have 50 milliseconds for uh, how to say switching and uh, this system is uh, switching uh, fast uh, fastly but keep in mind it's not to E1000 link, it's just one E1000 link and another connection. And E1000 is able to redirect traffic, which is normally sent over air to this second system, which which is again mainly used for its more reliable solution that you will have gigabit link. This gigabit link is working permanently, but uh, you can expect something like two hours uh, uh, drop per year. And for this two hours per year, you will not use E1000, but you will use uh, backup link for example this 24 or 17 gigahertz which is uh, which uh, this link has uh, higher uh, availability power supply i mentioned 40 volt uh, dc consumption it's 40 watts there is a uh, over voltage protection on uh, ethernet cable which is going to the unit and also in protected box and uh, we have special application which is called scs sub 10 control system which is fully managing this link advantage of this application is that you can manage not only one link but if you have more links you can run this application and from one client basic installation you can support up to 50 links from one computer if you need more than 50 links uh, to manage you can deploy so-called server 
in this case it will be server on dedicated computer with you know some professional database with um, fast uh, disk array and this system will pull i don't know thousand of, of links and if you need to manage one concrete link you will simply go to the server and server will work as proxy between you and link and in many countries same like vband it's a uh, license free or license exempt that it's very low fee uh, which customer or user uh, users uh, have to pay uh, to government uh, for license or spectrum usage oh wait 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 a minute uh... Hi John, I'm just doing webinar. Okay, I will be finishing in 45 minutes, eh? Okay, protected box. Uh, this is uh, coming with ODU and this is installed indoor. And functionality of this unit is to combine data and power together on one cable. Uh, it's very small unit. Uh, you see, you have here two power inputs, you can have redundancy power. If you have a location with two independent 40 volt uh, DC power supply, you can connect one to upper and second to the lower connector. And then you have two RJ connector, line two, line three. And then you have two grommet or two ground uh, for cable. It means this one, it's for line three. From this port, cable is going to the ODU and your network switch or router it's connected uh, using normal RJ45 connector and going to your switch. And this box, it's simply taking the power, which is going to these connectors, putting on line three, and then to the ODU. It's very easy for installation. You can install it in 19 inch rack or you can uh, on, on DIN rail. And if you need, you can put three modules together to create one, one new 19 inch rank. Uh, this is this last point. Three boxes can be connected together to create uh, to, to fulfill one U size in 19 inch inches rack. This is, uh, if you are ordering link, it's a little bit different because we have antennas and some additional accessories. You have to order link. If you order link, you will receive two ODUs and two protected box. Then you have to order two antennas. Remember, there are two versions, 35 and 65 centimeters. If you don't have power supply, you can order power supply from us, and then you can order some cable, STP cable, CAT7, or uh, optical fiber cable to be able to connect, to make connection between protected box and ODU. Characteristic for ODU, I mentioned terminal A, terminal B, you see difference. Terminal E, it's lower band, it's transmitting on lower frequencies. Terminal B, it's higher band. And as I mentioned before, we have uh, more ODUs. Each ODU has at least two metallic ports. It can be Ethernet, fast Ethernet, or gigabit Ethernet. It's auto sensing. And if you want, you can order a system with two metallics and one optical single mode, or you can order a unit with two metallics and uh, one optical multi mode. There is new one. It's last unit that you can order with two metallic port and one VDM, which is using single fiber uh, connection uh, to ODU. Uh, regarding the ODU, uh, you see it's uh, the, the, the biggest one because you have this two me me metallic port, you have two glands to go to the system. You have optical connector. We are using Molex connector inside our two LC connectors, but it's protect. It's a bionet system, which is waterproof. And you can again, this BNC, when you can connect the uh, voltmeter and during alignment, you can measure what is the voltage voltage level. And on the label you have, uh, on, on the ODU you have label, which is saying whether it's terminal A or B, what is the name, what frequency is used, and there is also printed serial number and MAC address of the unit. Regarding antennas, I mentioned two antennas, 35 and 65 centimeters. Difference, as you expect, different gain, 48 and 52, but also this one is bigger, uh, this one is more heavy, 80 kilo compared to 11 kilo. And of course, if you have 65 centimeters uh, antenna, be careful about the diameter of the mast or pipe because if you put 56 centimeter on 42 millimeter mast there is high probability that during the windy conditions uh, there will be vibration and movement which can affect link uh, availability again now, these are parameters uh, for antennas you see 
it's Etsy 2 class and even we have Etsy 3 class uh, equipment and this is what is what is uh, how to say antenna characteristic you see how what is the radiating level and this is what I mentioned if you look uh, there is at least uh, there is more than yeah, there is around 13 dB between main and side lobe of the antenna. Same for 65. These are antennas. Uh, don't worry if you receive it on our web page again. If you go back, uh, you have uh, in an installation manual, look, you have assembly guide for 35 centimeter and 65 centimeter. It's like 14 page document when you have step by step how you have to finish the antenna because uh, for transportation, uh, the antennas are not, I would say, mounted or assembled. It's partially assembled uh, to minimize the size of the box for shipment. But in this user guide, you have everything described. You have, uh, this is just one picture, but you have all position for each component. You have this, uh, this is the dish. You have radiator, you have OPN, you have uh, this main bracket, and you have a uh, mast bracket, uh, which is uh, making connection this one to this one and then you have must install it here and you have here two screws for alignment in vertical and in horizontal position if you put everything together it's looking like this one you have ODU which is clipped on this four hooks and it's going directly to the radiator 65 centimeters is very similar this mountain mountain brackets are same uh, there is difference the the dish and also radiator it's a little bit different but it's very if, if you know one antenna how to align 35 centimeters antenna you are able to align 65 centimeters if you look for the picture it's different because it's bigger but same approach you have this bracket and an uh, audio it's fixed on four hooks which are behind the antennas uh, there is uh, again this is from the manual you see if you receive it uh, disassembled you have a really easy picture how to main together everything yeah. it's a couple of screws and nuts but it's uh, well documented in in assembly guide there is for alignment you see there is this one it's for vertical it's moving unit in vertical direction and this screw it's using for horizontal alignment okay it's again detail just remember we recommended to use the cut 7 stp cable be careful if you are using different cable check the diameter of this cable it's okay to to make waterproof uh, over this gland it's not so critical on uh, indoor but on ODU, we are using same grommet or same, same ground. And there is, uh, inside is a gum ring. And you have to be sure that your cable plus gum is doing uh, enough waterproof uh, protection. And this is, uh, as I mentioned, if you need to mount it to the 19-inch rack, that you can order this l bracket or this uh, intermediate panel, how to mix together. And then you have three protected box fixed as one use unit which you can immediately install to 19 inch rank. Power supply which you can order from us, we have different, we have like, it's not low. It's basic functionality, it's uh, 75 and 120 watt, why different? This one it's okay for one unit and this one is okay for two unit. If you have unit when you have more links, at least two links, it's better to order this uh, 120 two times because then you can have uh, remember this protected box has two power inputs and if you have location with two links uh, two units uh, you have these two protected box and you can simply order 120 watts power supply and use this one as uh, to one unit and second output to the opposite unit and same same from the second power supply and then you will have two power supply and each unit it's uh, powering from both these power supply and you have power redundancy if you need some more uh, or, or power supply with uh, more features, you can order this. Uh, what is different? That this one, it's uh, providing uh, backup battery. That there is also a connector for battery charging. And if your AC voltage is down, uh, the system is able to take power from the battery. And last one is adding IP management. That you can you can you uh, program IP address and through the SNMP or through web interface you can read parameters what is the actual temperature, status of battery, input voltage, output voltage and so on. Metallic cables I mentioned CAT7 it's recommended because it's designed for gigabit application and it's really important if you are going on some mass to have right cable definitely 
it has to be shielded and be careful to have outdoor cable and proper shielding. Because if you have just uh, this aluminum uh, foil or uh, foil with some metallic paint on it, it's not enough for outdoor installation. You can uh, there is some probability that you will receive some you know foreign data on your cable as well, and it will in indicate some noise, and it will have affect it will affect your link availability or, or link quality. These are these cable examples. This is uh, it's wrong. It's outdoor cable. You see each pair it's shielded, then all pairs are shielded together, and then you have a, a jacket which is ready for outdoor, which is UV stable and so on. Indoor cable, it's not so big. You have, uh, again, it's cut seven, each pair it's shielded, and then you have again shield, shield around. We have special cable which is called, it's like a gigabit plus fast ethernet. You can see that you have four pairs, one, two, three, four, which are ready for gigabit, and then you have additional two wires which can be used for fast ethernet. And in this case, you can connect through one cable to port of uh, event, e-product, and you will have like one gigabit and one fast Ethernet connection over one cable. Optical cable, uh, be careful, it's using this Molex connector, which is uh, it's standard, it's not our proprietary, it's Molex, it's company, which is doing waterproof outdoor connector. And we are using, uh, if you order cable from us, we are using a military standard outdoor cable optical cable which is you know uh, in a, of course you can you can damage the cable but uh, uh, all the protection like a plastic jacket and so on it's uh, designed to be in a really bad environment yeah with some dirty water and so on you can order single mode or both version of multi mode if you need order the cable uh, we have in the price list uh, by default 10 meters and then we have items per one meter. And if you need, for example, order 97 meter of single fiber, single mode fiber, it's very easy. You will specify one 10 meter cable and then you will specify 87 one meter. And the uh, result will be that you will receive one cable, which will be connectorized, LC connector on a part, which will be used in indoor. And this Molex with LC inside, which will be for outdoor, and it will be 97 meter length long. And uh, to be sure that you understand how to order because it's different than V-Band. This is basic specification. We have one part number and then uh, you have in this part number you have a uh, liberator link which means that you have two ODU, one terminal A, one terminal B and two protected boxes. This is in this one part number. Then you have to specify based on your link calculation uh, what will be antenna size. In this case, it's 35 centimeters, and we have to specify two antennas. This is this antenna. If you don't have power supply, you have to specify two power supplies to have power for each location. And if you don't have cable locally, you, can, you have to specify uh, the cable for ordering. In this case, I specify 180 meters, like 90 meters for each location. And this quantity will provide you all materials which you need for link installation. SCS, I mentioned it's application how to control. It's a Windows based application, but it's running also on Macintosh. If you are installing some, uh, some X11 application packages, it's uh, managing uh, both terminals. If link it's up, you see like this one, I am locally connected to one terminal, which is 75 to 85. And I see also a remote terminal, which is Terminal B because it's uh, transmitting 85 and receiving 75. And you see our characteristic. You see that system is configured for ATPC, automatic transmission power control. Maximum parameter for ATPC is 20 dB, but actually system is running just plus 9 and opposite side plus 7 dB. You, you see also information about temperature inside box and you see some information about signal quality. In this case, bit error rate it's zero because link is okay. And from this application, you can change what you want. You can change uh, the frequency used because it's fully programmable from 71 to 76 and 81 to 86. You can change power control, whether it will be manual, ATPC, what will be level for ATPC, and this type of uh, functionalities. Regarding the uh, throughput, uh, because we are we are FDD system and we are really providing enough capacity, what you can see, and how you can prove how 
uh, our products are really good. You can see on this uh, screenshot from the measurement tool. Uh, it's doing measurement on layer one. Uh, if you are doing measurement on layer one, it's not sending frames. It's just sending z symbols, zero and one, once over the uh, media. And test is running that you have this one, which is generator and receiver. It's going to link over wireless on the opposite side and opposite uh, wireless link or terminal has just loop. And this loop, it's uh, sending data which are coming from the wireless link back to the wireless link. And you can see it's set to generate 320 megabits per second. It means it's 320 million zeros and one in, in one second. And receiving it's again 320. It's not doing any frames, packet, like UDP, TCP. It's, it's simply generating zero and ones. But you have proved that really 320 megabits, it's going through the link and coming back because you see it's running. It's running for 48 seconds. And there is no alarm. Link is working. And you can you can prove that, okay, look for it. If somebody is uh, uh, speaking about throughput, just do this basic test. Take such measurement and make measure the link or layer one uh, uh, capacity. And you will be su surprised how how will be different uh, compared to some you know data sheet parameters or data sheet values. Our websites, I already mentioned we have this uh, www.subtensystems.com, which is our official web page. But uh, we have also a web page which is support. I will show you later. And <clears throat> we have also, uh, we are on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And on YouTube, if you need, you can find some short videos uh, or also some another webinars, uh, recorded webinars, and you can use it for your additional education. Before question, I will just show you this uh, support, which is like unofficial. It's more like technical. It's managed by us, me, John, Hussein. And it's very basic uh, view. For example, this uh, we have Summer University, which is like education over uh, some, some useful topics, uh, uh, which we see as useful for our partners. It's what is, uh, what is uh, coming. But you can also, if you go to the training and events, you can pass webinars. And if, for example, if you need uh, to know more about E1000, you can simply go and find a webinar like this one. And you can just download presentation or recorded video. If you, if you click on the recorded video, system will direct you on YouTube. And you have, like, uh, you see, one and a half hour presentation with detail. Uh, uh, presentation, which is really deep regarding the E1000. You can find uh, about our 5 gigahertz product as well. This is, how to say, information source for you. Yeah, remember, it's very easy. Sub-10 systems and then support systems, subsystems con. Okay, now uh, it's all from presentation. Now I will open your microphones. And if you have any question, you can ask. Hola, y hola también, porque creo que tenemos ah, oh, algunos oh, okay, sorry. españoles. Okay, Diana, you can continue. All people are unmuted, they can respond to you. Okay. Uh, ¿Alguna duda? No, yo no tengo. Yo no tengo. Achei muy buena la presentación. Ok, perfeito. Eu vou, bem, acho que posso falar en portugués. Um, eu vou disponibilizar as apresentações mais tarde. Uh, no caso de vocês quererem rever alguma questão. Uh, e, se entretanto, já sabem, se tiverem mais alguma dúvida, tanto eu como o Peter, podemos responder, está bem? Podem enviar para mim ou para ele, um, é indiferente, ok? Ok. Que tal? Acham que foi aprofundada uh, o suficiente? Eu acho que está excelente, né? Em termos, vamos dizer, uma, em termos comercial e técnico está bem, né? Uhum. Pronto, a ideia era precisamente esta, era que, que o webinar fosse um bocadinho dos dois, tivesse a parte comercial, mas também que fosse suficientemente aprofundado para vos dar um, um melhor conhecimento do, do equipamento do ponto de vista técnico. Exatamente. Um, daí que isto seja mais um overview técnico do que propriamente uma, 
uma, uma apresentação comercial. Um, espero que estejam curiosos, pelo menos, em experimentar. Diana? Sim. Sim, sim. Diana? Eu estou a ouvir. Diana? Eu Oi, Marcelo, a gente está ouvindo. ouvindo. Eu acho que o Marcelo não nos está a ouvir a nós. Ah, legal. O Léo aqui quer falar um pouquinho. Ah, Seria ok. Seria a Oi, Léo. Pode falar, Léo. Diana, bom dia. Bom dia. É, assim, a gente tem uma, eu tenho uma dúvida é, é, peculiar, que exclusiva de um cliente nosso. A gente teve numa, numa, numa empresa de, de, de televisão, né? Uhum. Eles precisam saber se o nosso rádio, ele passa exclusivamente imagem. A gente consegue dedicar o rádio. Sim, nós temos classificação de serviço. Portanto, isso poderia ser filtrado. Mas uh, explico melhor exatamente. Portanto, eles querem controlar que apenas o vídeo passe pelo, por este canal? Isso é, justamente, eles querem só vídeo, porque eles sabem que a capacidade do rádio em internet é excelente, mas eles querem dedicar a transmissão via a nossa micro-ondas, via o nosso peixe, exclusivamente para a imagem. Uhum. Ok. Uh, eu posso expor também a, a questão mais diretamente ao Peter para ver um, o que é que ele diz. Peter, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Better? Okay. Yeah, the question I'm here. here okay. The question here is, they were presenting our products to a um, TV bro uh, broadcaster, mm -hmm. and they wanted to know if they could use our uh, links to pass only video information. So they wanted to filter the the data. Oh, in this, you mean to to make some data filtering on on? No, exactly. it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not. Uh, at this moment, it's not uh, implemented. Such such functionality. So the QoS doesn't allow it. QoS is just uh, adding or providing different capacity per different traffic. Yeah, but if if it's it's okay <laughs> in this case, it's possible in QoS, but not. It's not like filter, because if you mm -hmm. specify. If you specify, uh, you, you are not able to simply say that there will be just one one type of priority. Yeah? You are specifying what is the guarantee capacity for priority. And even if you specify 1000, for example, on gigabit mm -hmm. link, and you will not send a gigabit, you will send just half of gig. The rest, yeah. half of gig will be used for another traffic. Yeah? But if, okay, but it is it, possible at least to give a uh, higher priority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of traffic. it's it's okay. It's not issue if they are. It's different. It's not about filtering. If they are looking for prioritization, it's okay. Mm -hmm. They they are able to make prioritization to say that okay, for example, video stream will use priority. I don't know seven or six, and this queue, which is typically priority seven, is going to Q four, which is the highest one. You can specify it will be strict priority, and mm -hmm. you will specify. 90% of capacity for this priority and or no 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 if, if, if you if you specify strict priority uh, the queue which is with highest priority will be served completely and in case that there is some free capacity the rest of queue will be served in this case if they will be if they put video traffic to some priority and user rest of data will have different priority you can able to do it this way that you will say okay this This is top priority, and it will use strict algorithms. It means all traffic with this priority it's served first, it and the rest of will be served if there is some free. And in this case, they can do. But we are not able to make filtering to say simply, I don't know that uh, uh, you know the multicast will go through and and uh, unicast will not go through. We are not mm -hmm. able to filter, but we can. We are we are supporting QoS, and you can do it in this way. And it, okay. it's uh, it's it's uh, normally uh, it's. How to say default configuration that video traffic it's using typically priority six or seven, mm -hmm. which is the highest one, and it's going always to highest priority queue. Ok. Um, responde à vossa pergunta. Conseguiram? Sim. Uh, entendi, sim. 
Portanto, uh -huh. um, eu não sei se isto uh -huh. satisfa satisfazia, satisfaria por completo uh, o requisito do cliente em causa. Mas eu acredito que o que ele uh, pretendia era garantir Sim. que o vídeo passava sempre, certo? Que o tráfego de vídeo passava sempre. Uh, yes, uh, Diana, I have a question. Ok, ok, please. Um, if we can uh, give priority to the video using the QoS, that's fine. Yeah. But let's say that um, we're going to explain this to the client. But let's say they, they really want to filter, you know, everything else out. Uh, is there any equipment that we could add to, you know, uh, uh, um, the equipment set that you could recommend so we could filter this out for them? Okay, Peter, can you give some suggestion? Okay, it's uh, it's very difficult to suggest exact product because uh, if customer is doing uh, or asking for such functionality it's important to know what is used in infrastructure because usually what can they they can they can put some router even basic routers and they can simply allow some ports uh, which are related to application and then filter this this uh, type of traffic or if they have some smart switches they are definitely able to do some filtering on these switches but uh, I, I cannot You know, you know, it can be some router or even currently used switch can be used for such functionality. But uh, we, uh, the customer has to specify more what, what is the type of traffic on most part of the network and what its uh, traffic allow on the link and what is not allow. It's not so easy to say. Uh, and uh, typically, if customer is doing this functionality, the customer is uh, definitely using some devices like switches, which are layer to layer C, and uh, they are able to do filtering on this one. Yeah. To be, to be honest, up to now, uh, everybody is just asking what is the capacity and, and doing QoS. And if they are asking for filtering, they have definitely already some infrastructure which is doing, because this filtering is usually not just for one link. Yeah? It's using somewhere in the network and they have to have full control on it. Yeah? And this is what is normal approach. That they, have, they have some, they know that I, our system is layer to bridge. And if they, they need to do some filtering, they put some, you know, Smart switch, which is able to do layer two, layer three filtering, or, or layer two, layer three uh, capabilities, or even you can put router or something like firewall and do filtering based on the firewall rules. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. and um, so uh, if they are not happy with the um, QoS only and they really need um, filtering. We're gonna ask them, you know, uh, the specifics, uh, so we can get back to you guys, and uh, maybe you can, uh, you know, uh, on case by case, you can uh, tell us, uh, give some advice. Yeah, definitely. But as, right. as you as you mentioned, there has to be specification. What is what is the network? What they are using in the network, and what they would like to mm. filter over the link? Yeah, because there there is many many possibilities how to solve it or how to do it, and uh, uh, and again, I I will be. I will be surprised if customer is asking for such functionality and he will not be able to do on today infrastructure yeah, because uh, there has to be some reason for it. And if they are asking, it's just new requests. Uh, it's not like new requests that they have new PTP link and they would like to filter something. They, they already probably do such filtering and they are doing on their equipment because they have to have full control on it. Yeah. Okay. Understand. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? No, I don't think so. Not, not for all, and I will I will check the material and I will write some questions, and mm -hmm. we will resolve each one. Okay, okay, yeah. Please, okay? please feel free to do that. Yes. Okay, so the next session will be in uh, one hour and a half, more or less, right? Um, and I hope it right. gives you some time to rest. And for you too, Peter. <laughs> some time to make uh, you know, a conversion. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. Yeah. Sorry? Um, no. Thanks a lot for the uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity and you get back in one hour and a half. Okay, perfect. Okay. We will be waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Thanks too for your time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah.